hello students today we are going to discuss question answer which are based on this chapter quality and after that we will complete the exercises so let's start before going to complete the exercises we will revise the chapter once again John Glassworthy quality contains Jester the shoemaker's second is author's complaint third is Jester's experience fourth is elder Jester's brother's death and fifth is younger Jester's brother's death now first Jester the shoemaker the story is about two siblings german shoemaker who were known for their shoemanship they ran a rustic and traditional place and made bespoke boots as per a specific order their quaint shop had a small display of their finest work it was titled after their family name the story is written from the perspective of a royal customer and a fan of mr jessler's work and craftsmanship the narrator acknowledged the fact that the jessler shoes are so durable that they can last for many a year which makes a visit to the shop very rare so the narrator begins with the visit to the shop however this time he orders a pair of russian leather boots the veteran shoemaker brings a splendid pair of golden shoes and made of immaculate russian leather the narrator falls in love at the first sight of those boots and gives his nod to the shoemaker mr jessler ask him to come back after a spell of 2 weeks now here the author's complain the story moves forward to another visit by the narrator to the same shop however this time he has the complaint to make unlike other footwear made by mr jessler the narrator complains about his pair as they creak and are uncomfortable mr jessler treat his work as both art and religion he employs his creative skill to produce quality footwear of top notch leather and religiously adheres to his lofty standard listening to rare complaints he does not get ruffled or flustered and calmly asks the narrator to bring the shoes for an examination in case they can be fixed he would do it otherwise the narrator would be completely reimbursed jessler experience we move to the another meeting between the two men who the when the narrator wants a brand new pair he comes wearing different shoes from some big labels and franchises mr jessler uses his vast experience and expertise and points at the stop where the shoe causes discomfort and pain to the narrator for the first time mr jessler shows condemnation and contempt for something the profiteering and honest clubber big shoe firms which disregard customer satisfaction and focus on revenues and quality of production they spend exorbitant and insane amount of money on lucrative endorsement and try to insane customers through collusive pricing and tricks the narrator expounds on his urgent and unavoidable need and circumstances for buying such shoes this evidence how much the narrator admires 
and appreciated Mr. Jessler's work. Elder Jessler's brother's death. The next visit happens after a two years gap when the narrator reaches the shop. He gets gut wrenching news. The elder Jessler's brother had died, and in pace in place the shop was run by the younger sibling. Eventually he settles himself down and ends up ordering multiple pairs of shoes. This time the order takes more time to finish, but the quality is better than what the narrator expected. Another year goes away before the narrator returns again to the shop. The surviving Mr. Jessler is now is in the 70s and has a hard time recollecting his old customers. The narrator ends up ordering more shoes than ever. Consequently, the wait is long, but to his surprise, the quality is even more impressive than before. A week passes by and the narrator happens to be in the same locality as the shoe shop. Therefore, he decided to extend his regard and praise to Mr. Jessler for his excellent work. However, the shop does not have the Jessler brothers' nameplate anymore. Younger Jessler brothers' death Perturbed and shocked, he enters the shop to find a new face. He asks the Englishman about Mr. Jessler's whereabouts, only to learn that the younger Jessler's also expired some days back. A deep sense of sadness and more senses infiltrates his thoughts. The Englishman tells him that Mr. Jessler starved to death as he could not separate himself for his work. Married to his shoemaking, he became oblivious to everything else. He spent all his earning on buying new leather and maintenance of the shop. This, however, ended up accelerating his health and eventual device, demise. In the end, as a fitting tribute, both men acknowledge and laud the quality of work, unmatched skill and relentless pursuit of excellence exhibited by both the Jessler siblings. Their shoes commented their legacy ensuring their work outlived their own life spans. Now let's talk about the theme of story quality. In Quality by John Glassworthy, we have the theme of commitment, determination, loyalty, honesty, dedication and loss. Now after this, we just move to the question and answer which are based on this chapter. Working with the text, the first question is, what was the author's opinion about Mr. Jessler as a bootmaker? Now let's move to the text and see the answer. Now here we can see the answer. There was no sign upon it other than the name of Jessler's brother. And in the window a few pairs of boots, he made only what was ordered, and what he made never failed to fit. To make boots such boots as he made seemed to be me, then, and it still seems to me, mysterious and wonderful. Now here you can see the answer.
This answer we can write like this. The author was very impressed with Mr. Jessler. He liked the boot made only on order and those boots perfectly fitted the customers. Their boots had the best materials and lasted long. He found the work mysterious and wonderful. Now let's move to the second question. The second question is, why did the author visit the shop so infrequently? Now let's move to the text and see the answer. The author visited the shop so infrequently because the boots made by Jessler's brothers lasted too long. Now let's move to the question number three. What was the effect on Mr. Jessler of the author's remark about a certain pair of boots? Now here we can see the answer. Now here we can see the answer. I cannot for forget that day on which I had occasion to say to him, Mr. Jessler, that last pair of boots creaked, you know. He looked at me for a time without replying, as if expecting me to withdraw or quality the statement, then said it shouldn't do our great. It did, I am afraid. You got them wed before they found themselves. I don't think so. At that, he lowered his eyes as if hunting off for memory of those boots and I felt sorry I had mentioned this grave thing. Now here we can see the answer. When the author remarked that a certain pair of boots he had got earlier creaked, Mr. Jessler looked at him for a time without replying, as if expecting him to withdraw or call it quality or qualify the statement. Then he said that the shoes should not have creaked. He then asked the author to send the boots back and if he could do nothing of them, he could take them off his bill. Now here we can see the answer. Now let's move to the next question. The next question is, fourth, what was Mr. Jessler? Now let's move to the text. Now here we can see the answer. They did, they get it all, he said. They get it by advertisement, not by work. They take it away from us who love who our boots. It comes to this. But lately, I have no work. Every year it gets less, you will see. Now here, we can see the answer and we will write this answer in our own word. Mr. Jessler's complaint against big firms was that they got customers only because of the advertising and not because of any quality work. Mr. Jessler, who loved his job and who used to make good quality boots, had very little work because people preferred the big firms. Now let's move to the next question. The next question is, why did the 
author order so many pairs of boots did he really need them now let's move to the text i suppose the cause of his death do you wear any boots as he held held up the leather in a, in his hand it is a beautiful beast i ordered several pairs it was a very long before they came but they were better than ever one simply could not wear them out and soon after that i went abroad and before seeing this we just see the situation what was happened over there oh i am sorry yes he answered he was a good man he made a good boot but he is dead now here we can see the answer and after that the remaining part of the answer is here so we will write the answers like that the author knew that the mr jesslers made good quality boots every single pair of boots was good enough to last a long time he came to know from mr jessler himself that in spite of his love for his job he could not get much work this was because people preferred buying boots from big firms seeing his hardship and his struggle the author decided to order many pairs of boot even though he really did not really need them and here we can see he heard that his elder brother was died so he also ordered several pairs of shoes and the answer which are the second reason to buying more food more boots as best i could i explained the circumstances of those ill omened in boots but his face and voice made so deep an impression that during the next few minutes i ordered many pairs they lasted longer than ever and i was not able to go to him for nearly 2 years now let's move to the exercises which are based on this chapter working with language study the following phrases and their meanings use them appropriately to complete the sentences that follow look after means take care of look down on disapprove or regard as inferior look in on someone who make a short visit look into investigate look out be careful look up improve look up to admire now let's complete the exercise after a very long spell of heat the weather is dash at last After a very long spell of heat the weather is looking up at last so we will write looking up at last now second we have no right to dash people who do small jobs we will write here look down
Nitin has always dash his uncle who is self-made man. Nitin has always looked up to his uncle who is self-made man. Fourth, the police are dash the matter thoroughly. The police are looking into the matter thoroughly. Looking into fifth, if you want to go out, I will dash the children for you. If you want to go out, I will look after the children for you. Now six, I promise to dash on your brother when I visit Lucknow next. I promise to look in. Look in on your brother when I visit Lucknow next. And seventh is dash when you are crossing the main road. Look out. Look out when you are crossing the main road. Now the second question is read the following sets of words loudly and clearly. Caught, coat, coast, cost, tossed, toast, got, goat, rot, wrote, blot, bloat, not, note. Each of the following words contains the sound sure as in shine, in the beginning, or in the middle, or at the end. First speak out all the words clearly, then arrange the words in three groups in the table on page number 80. Sheep, anxious, portion, chew, trash, shriek, ashes, pushing, marsh, shore, sure, Polish, fashion, fish, nation, mouse stitch. Now here we have to complete this exercise. In initial we will write sheep, in medieval we can write ashes and in final we can write marsh so this way we can complete the exercise in fourth in which in each of the following words ch represent the same consonant sound as in chair. The words on the left have this sound initially. Those on the right have it finally speak each and word clearly. Choose bench, child, march, cheese, peach, chair, rich, charming, research. Underline the letters representing the sound in each of the following words. This way we can complete. And in speaking, do you think Mr. Justice was a failure as a bootmaker or as a competitive businessman? What is the significance of the title? To whom or to what does it refer? Now let's move to the 
gives a reason for not agreeing with ajit the sentence opening given bil- below should be used here are some points on which point we can write a story in writing part based on following points write a story your aunt has gone to her mother's house your uncle does his cooking he is absent minded he puts vegetable on the stove he begins to clean his bicycle outside the neighbor calls out saying something is burning your uncle rushes to the kitchen to save vegetables he puts some oil on them unfortunately it's machine oil not cooking oil what do you think happens to the vegetable so this way you just complete your writing part on these points you should write a story now in the speaking part we will discuss these question do you think mr jessler was a failure as a bootmaker or as a competent competitive businessman now here we can see the answer mr jessler was successful as a boot boot maker because his customers were immensely satisfied with the boot he made this perfectly fit them and lasted long yes he was a failure as a competitive businessman he didn't have money like the big firms so couldn't invest and in advertisements he lost his business to them he took time in delivering the boots because he made them alone he lost his customers because of the delay in delivery he worked hard striving for long hours whatever he earned went on paying the rent for his shop and for buying leathers he spent days of great penury now the question number 2 what is the significance of the title to whom or to what does it refer the title refers to the great quality boots mr jessler made it is an ideal title for the lesson it refers to the business practices followed these days where no one cares about quality for mr jessler quality was the optimum significance he worked for long hours didn't allow anyone as to touch his boots he lost on business was spending days in poverty still the main man didn't compromise on quality now here the question based on the accent of the mr jessler because he was a um, german so the mr jelmer used to speak english with the german accent his english sounded funny a bit difficult to understand mr jessler would have spoken these lines as it comes and never spots does it bother me not at all ask my bothers please question which can be asked how did mr jessler die jessler died of starvation he was very dedicated worker and he wouldn't let anyone touch the boot except himself he spent his time day and night in the shop and did not find time to eat and save a penny as a result he died of starvation now next question what was unique about mr jessler answer you can write jessler was unique because he made only ordered boots which were mysterious and wonderful in shape and fit in finishing and quality of leather 
they were the best and doubtedly his work was unique and now next question can be asked what is the story of quality quality tells the story of mr jessler a german shoemaker although mr jessler makes the best boots in london his business is failing because he is unable to compete with the big companies around him there was no sign upon it other than the name of the jessler brothers and in the window a few pairs of boots now the next question can be asked what is the theme of the story quality in quality by john glassworthy we have the theme of commitment determination loyalty honesty dedication and loss one more question can be asked can a shoemaker be called an artist yes if he has the same skill and pride in his trade as any other artist and the same respect for it too so the shoemaker can be called an artist the next question is what impressed the narrator about jessler's brothers the writer john glassworthy knew the jessler's brothers since he was very young because his father used to order boots from them john usually ordered his boots for him too and he always thought that the boots were strange and extremely good so that is why he admired the maker so these are the question we have to complete and exercises which are given in this chapter you just complete it but that's all for today bye bye